All right, so into Dasana. So that's mountain pose, toes together. So usually we're on the floor, kind of uh, taking some moments to think about intention, but we're gonna move to the floor. We'll, we'll work our way to the floor, but we're gonna do this nice intention, breathing, eyes closed, hands to your side in mountain pose. So your, your toes are kind of together, your heels are a little apart. So find a, a variation of that that feels right for your body. So some people need their feet a little more, some people closer. So just find what feels good and grounded for you. And then spread your toes on the mat. Just spread them out and, and just rock back and forth a little bit. And begin feeling the energy in your navel because that's how we're gonna protect our back. So I always want you to check and recheck back with that navel. So you're just keeping uh, that core, right? Mm -hmm. And then that wraps around and protects your back. So I'll tell you to fire up your glutes sometimes too, because those glutes work with all that to protect your back too. And who doesn't want that? So, okay. you know, <laughs> but just spread the toes, close your eyes, and just let yourself just sort of glide off. We're going to find our intention. So like I said, normally you might start in tiles, pose, and something else on the mat, but we're going to find this peaceful beginning moment right here in mountain pose. So. Eyes closed, lift your chest up, roll your shoulders back a little bit. Just keep that navel active and begin finding your breath. So deep inhale through the nose, into the belly, and then exhale ah, through the lips, parted lips, maybe exhaling more. And find pauses at the bottom and the top. So I'm gonna go quiet here just for a few breaths. I'm with you, eyes closed. Just finding our peaceful moment, connecting with our intention, bringing peace into our day. And still keeping your eyes closed, Gently find a way to bring your hands up over your head, reaching up, maybe tucking your hips in a little bit, pressing the shoulders down, reaching up, chest lifts up, keep that breath. The breath is key. And then put your hands in prayer and lower to your forehead, hands to forehead. So the word for peace in Sanskrit, and Sanskrit is the language of yoga, is shanti. Shanti means peace. So let's just open the practice with one om shanti, 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 and we'll close with that too. So inhaling to begin, hands to forehead in prayer. Om shanti, shanti. Shanti. And lowering your hands all the way down, maybe your eyes begin to soften and open up a little bit. So spread your feet, hips width apart. So you can kind of hear some Sanskrit words. So I'm, I'm bringing your memory back to, oh, that's right, you get some Sanskrit stuff in yoga, yay. And they have really cool vibrations. So when you say the words or you hear the words, it actually vibrates off your body. It's cool. This is ancient stuff. We don't even know exactly how it works. We just know it does. I mean, some people have ideas. Some people can explain it to some degree. Let's go ahead and do some noodle arms. But this stuff is so old. There's just magic in it or inspiration. Yeah. yeah. And I love this. It's a nice way to open your back, to twist a little, just to ease into. And it's super relaxing. Noodle arms. And just following your arms back, picking up your throat a little bit. And bring that core in a little more. So we're gonna start activating that a little more. And then come to stillness with your hands to your side, lifting your chest, press your shoulders down, tucking your hips in a little bit, activate that core. Maybe let's put your hand on your belly and do some belly pumps. So Pressing that navel in and out. Pump, 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 pump. It's 
really good for digestion and really good to activate the core, getting that to work to protect your spine. Then release your hands. So you're gonna you're gonna know your core is talking to you now. So you'll be like, okay, let's keep that there. Let's go ahead and just exercise our neck, open our throat. So nodding yes to all things that lift up my spirit. Inhaling up, exhale down. <sighs> yes to happiness. Yes to healing. Yes to my breath and peace. And then the next time, just bringing your head up to neutral, eyes can be closed or soft, whatever feels good. Let's go right to left, inhaling, exhaling. So this way, your head may be making a no, but the no is gonna be no to anything that does not lift me up. No to anything that does not bring me joy and more awareness, enlightenment. Just no thank you, no with, with no sticky stuff to it. Just no thank you, it's just not, not what I want right now. No thank you. And then just move into half circles, semi circles or full circles, but just careful not to crunch the neck and the back if you're doing forwards. Be careful to protect those little delicate bones in the back of your neck. And if you wanna roll side to side, bring your ear closer to one shoulder, Let's go ahead and do that. Take the ear close to the left shoulder and let that left hand just slide down as the ear goes. And just sliding down your leg, ears close to the shoulder. Keep the core, press the hips in, and then come up. But keep that ear close to the shoulder. Take the left hand and just gently guide. Yeah, yeah, that hand, <laughs> that leg. <laughs> I get confused a lot with my direct. And then gently releasing and come on up and then let the right hand slide down and the ear comes close to the shoulders. You slide, opening up the side. Maybe you look up, maybe you look down. And then gently coming up with core and bring that hand around, gently on the head, just encouraging that a little more. Stay with the breath and then come on up, release the hand, do a little shake. Let's just go ahead and get the energy moving in the body. Just shake out, maybe jump. Super good for activating energy, moving, waking up chakras. And let's inhale and bring the hands up in prayer. So I like to take my left thumb over the right. I teach Kundalini too. And in Kundalini, the left is the feminine. So if you take the left one over the right, you're getting yourself more in touch with your feminine natal. Um, men would be right over left. So press the shoulders down, but reach up, tuck the hips, get that navel. Beautiful, beautiful. Now let's lean over to the right in a standing half moon. So, so as you're leaning, reach out with the hands. So you're stretching, you're opening up the side opening up the ribs, opening up the digestive system, keep the core and stretch for three, two, maybe you're looking up, one, and with a lot of core, gently come up, yes, and reach up again, the shoulders are pressing down, but reach, really feel the mid body opening up, exhale, and then one more inhale, and then exhale, other side, same thing on the left side, or the other side. Let's stretch and reach. One breath. Then come up. And release your hands. Shake it out again. More. And let's do some standing poses before we come down onto the mat. So come to the top of the mat. Can, you can see me okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so at the top of your mat, we're going to um, inhale and reach up again, maybe again in prayer, but come up on your toes. So we're working on some balance. So we're going to start in candle flame first. So balance takes practice, and we should do a little balance every day. Um, you may want to check in with my yin yang class, yin yang, um, uh -huh. standing up, and that's it moves a little more. 
Uh, maybe after a couple of gentle classes, you can jump in that and move a little more, but it's, it's fun and it's a nice balance between the yang. You're still standing on your toes for balance and the nice yin stretching movements. So keep on your toes and see if you can bring your hands to your chest and just lower down so we're in a toe chair. So come down low, tuck your hips in, get that navel in and fire up those glutes. Glutes help with balance and let's go all the way down. As long as your knees are okay, if there's anything you need to tell me, you can tell me or if I'm doing something that like you don't, then I'll help you modify. That's what we do as, as yoga teachers. We're always modifying even for ourselves <laughs> and come all the way up again. So this is a tough one and then lower the heels down and you can go ahead and bring your hands in prayer and let's go into full chair. So I, I like it at, at my chest a lot because um, in prayer, because um, it's easier on the shoulders, but let's go ahead and just check in and see what you like. Because so sometimes it's nice to give a little stretch here so you can reach out or the most challenging one is straight up. Yeah, so well, these <laughs> options, it is, they're hard. So you can, even if you try it, you can try it for a breath and then move back into another one. So we're in prayer and let's go ahead and now check your form that your knees are aligned together. So your one knee shouldn't be jutting out more than the other. So just sinking in, tucking your hips in, really fire up that core. You're gonna feel it in your glutes. And when you tuck that tailbone in, you're gonna feel your spinal cord, it's going to stretch more. So this stuff is really good for your, your posture, your spine. And exhale, forward fold, gently, hallelujah. Moving out of chair, chair is a challenge. <laughs> yes. And so just release here in the folder and the forward fold it's not snap and um be micro bending your knees and if you want to take your hands and just rub them up and down your leg telling your muscles it's okay i'm back we're going to be doing this a lot now so just get used to it <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps you want to take thumbs in your elbows and picture frame your face and that feels really good just hang here and relax maybe sway from side to side and then release your hands and then bring them up your shins with a flat back so not on your knees, but on your shins. So you're pressing, your back is really extending forward. So your, your hips are going back, your, your shoulders are pushing back, your shoulder blades are going down your back, but your, your, your head is like somebody's pulling the string, so you're going forward. So really, really stretching the spine, wrapping the core muscles around it. So just stay here for a second while we're telescoping out with the spine. Pressing shoulders back. Now exhale, go back down in the forward fold. And inhale, bring it all the way up. Slightly bent knees, bring hands up. Nice big inhale, again, perhaps in prayer. Exhaling through forehead, through heart. All the way down back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. So these prayer brings us back to breath and gratitude, to the forehead, to peace, which is what we're seeking, to heart, heart-centered compassion. So these things are constant body reminders for us to calm, to breathe, to bring in health. So from here, back into mountain pose, let's go ahead and lift the right no, let's lift the leg. Let's start on the left, left side. Left leg up for just a, a 90 degree angle. In front. And you can bring your arms out and then to the side. And back to the front. And through warrior three. So the leg is going behind you in this nice balance and reaching forward, lifting the leg. So you can always kickstand it. Again, you're just coming back. So it might take you a minute to get your balance and every day is different. So <laughs> mm. 
I'm in menopause, so oh my gosh, my hormones are flying around. I'll be like, well, balance isn't happening today. And then come back in with that 90 degree. And then lower the foot down. Now we're going to come up into to traditional tree. So the options here with this left foot is kickstand or on your calf or above your knee. So never on the knee, never pressing on the knee. So tree, just find your your focal point, which is called your drishti. Breathe here in tree. Any arm movements you want to play with, growing branches, making it fun. For three, two, one, gently release down. Good. Maybe step back and forth on the feet. Excellent. So let's ground the left foot this time and just bring up that 90 degree. It's a nice way to ease into tree. Just holding here, getting used to this balance right in front of you, knee lifted, foot flexed. Fire up the glutes, feel the core, lift the chest. Where is your breath? Always oh, breathe. I know. <laughs> to the side. to the front and then through warrior three reaching lift that back leg fire those glutes up it helps with balance yep <laughs> not as balanced on this side <laughs> i know it's true every side is different every day is different and then come back in again back where we started and then lower the foot down and let's prepare to do that traditional three so on this side, maybe you start in kickstand and then you like, okay, calf. Okay, let's go for it. And just staying here for a few breaths. And three, two, one. And bring that down, walk it out. Good. At the top of the mat, let's just go ahead and step back with the left foot into crescent lunge. So the heel is going to be up. In the back. You may want to try to straighten that back leg and go lower with the front. Or you may bend it a little. So just playing with what feels good. So you want a little challenge, but you don't want to be super sore tomorrow. You want to get give your, your muscles a chance to stretch back out. You don't want to pull anything. So you know, the knee is always going a little more toward the pinky. So you want to avoid the knee going inside. Not good for your hips. And tuck your hips in a little bit because we're always trying to lengthen the spine. Fire up the glutes, get that booty strong. Inhale, bring the hands up, sink into your crescent lunge. Lift the chest, press the shoulders down, arms straight and close to your ears. If you want to try a little back bend, that feels good. It's fine. It's another balance challenge. You can always bring your hands in prayer as well. So take a nice breath here. Exhale. <sighs> Just begin really having a relationship, Cindy, with your breath. So important. And it just feels amazing. So... Exhale, through parted lips, good. Now the next exhale, let's go ahead and bring that foot down for warrior one. So that's like a 40 degree angle with that back foot. It's going a little like that, the front foot's like this, the back foot's like this. Okay, so that's your warrior pose. Let's find a second and get that right. So feeling the feet, front one's pressing front, back one's pressing back. Find your arms, square your hips so they're facing front. Tuck your, tuck your hips in. Enjoy this warrior one. Now from here, we're gonna release our hands behind our back and clasp. Once you do that, open your chest, lift the chest up and lower a little bit for a back bend, nice gentle back bend. And with the inhale, then we're gonna exhale with core and come forward into a full fold, finding your humble warrior. So gently going forward. And then once you have our inside, torso inside that, that leg a little bit, then lift those flat hands up. 
rinsing your shoulders and just relaxing here. Chest may be resting a little bit on, on your thigh, on the inside. Just keep lifting the arms back, opening up the shoulders and chest. For three, two, one. Gently lowering those clasp pounds get to the back. Unclasp and then scoop them up. Good. Feeling the power of your form and your breath. Now take a nice big inhale, and let's exhale, and turn all the way facing the back of the mat, and then warrior two, facing the back of the room now, let's so warrior two on the left. You can keep the left side turned around if you need to see me. I mean, you can go ahead and jump around. Okay, so warrior two, you are, so the back foot is perpendicular to the front, and go ahead and just look um, straight ahead until we can get, get squared off. So your front body is straight, your knees facing that way, and this back leg is straight. But just go ahead and be straight here. Maybe hands on hips help you. And then bring the arms out and then turn your head. Okay. Can, you can see me? Yes. Okay, good. So just open up the chest, feel the chest expanding, creating more room for the lungs. Go a little lower if that feels good and keep adjusting, make sure your body is centered. And then release the back hand and flip the front and come into peace forward. And then come back up into warrior two. And then straighten that front leg and just wiggle in a little bit. We're going to do triangle. Okay. So, lift the chest, tuck the hips, and let's just do a playful hinge back and forward. And then when, you, when you're ready, then we're going to go easy into this. I love triangle. If, you know, sometimes you just, you know, if you're going to be careful going down. Um, so like a teapot, reaching out and then just lower yourself so the back hand comes up in the front. So you're reaching forward, you're sliding down forward. I think whichever way your top foot is pointing, that's where you're going low on. So you're not, are you going to your back? Yes. Okay, go to the front. Where your front toe is pointing? I see, yeah. Yeah, I've got my front toe. Pointing. Okay, you got it? Okay. It's hard for me to see. Okay, good. Make sure that your hips are tucked in and open your shoulders up and reach up with that top arm. Straight up to the sky with that top arm straight up to the ceiling. Yes, there you go. And then come up out of that one. Good. Turn your toes facing the same way and come into star. Just kind of feel the relief, the happiness that comes out of star pose. And then just step up back up to the front of the mat. My legs are shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's like your back. It's good. Well, That's we're gonna, good. We're gonna, after this, we're going to go and do some, some yin poses on the mat. But I uh -huh. just kind of wanted to give you sort of a welcome back. So a little level one and then some gentle. You yeah, know. that's good. No, it's good. It feels good. I just, I wasn't expecting them to shake. So I'm like, what? Yeah. Because they're like, oh, wow, we're back to exercising again. Yeah. <laughs> Yoga works the long muscles. Other athletic uh, um, sports, they, they don't work the long muscles. That's why more athletes are doing yoga now to improve their performance and use the long weight shorts. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. So let's just go ahead and step back this time with the right foot to crescent lunge. And bring the hands up, press the shoulders down, tuck the hips in, the elbow reaching down, lower a little bit, straight arms, shoulders down. Bring that breath in to the power of the pose. And then step the foot into that 40 degree, moving into warrior one. That back foot just comes down, heel down, and 
wiggles that foot around for warrior one. And then release the arms behind you, moving for humble warrior. So release them in your back, clasp. Bring the core in, lift your chest, a little back bend. Nice, inhale, exhale, come forward. And lift the clasp hands up and release your torso down. Maybe you go a little lower. Just breathe here a few breaths, enjoying this. And then gently lower those clasp hands to your hips. Unclasp and then scoop all the way back up for warrior one. And then open all the way back up to the back. So now your right foot is fit, is going forward. So warrior, warrior two on the right side yes. because of that full turnaround. And then once you have your warrior two really opening up the chest, stretching the arms, then release the back arm for the front, shoulders open and back, hips tucked in and bring it up for peaceful. Sliding the back hand down, reaching up to the right, open the shoulders, tuck the hips. Another breath here. And then come back into warrior two. And straighten the front leg. We're going to move into triangle on this side, so playfully hinging. Warming up. We can lower safely into this and hinge forward and slowly release down. Once you do, I like to place my hand against my, um, my calf, and that helps me align, bringing the arms straight up to the ceiling, opening the shoulders up, tuck the hips. Head coming back helps with the uh, shoulders opening because when your head goes back, it's, it's easier to think about bringing the chest out, lifting the heart, and then gently coming out of this back into your warrior two. And then come up, straighten the leg, turn the heel forward for a star. And let's bring the hands then out to the side. We're gonna do a nice fold here in uh, wide-legged forward fold. So just coming, but stop at the hinge here. Stop halfway, check the navel, really stretching the hands out. And then release the hands as you release your body down to the mat, to the floor. You may wanna open your legs up a little more. Let's take the left hand and put it in the center and inhale and bring the right hand up for a nice twist here. Twists are great for the digestive system. And then just lower the torso down and slide that left hand toward the right foot, maybe touching the foot or holding the ankle, but you're twisting now in this forward fold, this wide-legged forward fold. So before your arm was straight and you were doing kind of a have a flat back. One more breath here. And then exhale, bring both hands to the center. And then sweep that right one over a little more. Straighten the arm. Inhale, left hand all the way up, twisting here. And that kind of half lifted, wide legged twist. Exhale, lower the torso. Arm stays up. Sweep the hand over to the other leg. Left foot, left ankle and twist more here in this fold. And then exhale, bring both hands down, finding nice balance here. And let's do some side lunges. They're also called skandasanas. So just gently finding some movement from side to side. It doesn't matter how low you go, whatever your body is craving. You may have my snap crackle popping a little bit here. <laughs> and then and then place your hands on your hips and with your next nice inhale, just slowly bring it up with core. All the way to up. Good. And let's jump our feet together. <laughs> Definitely.
back up the next week. Okay, so come back to the front. Let's inhale all the way up. Exhale from sky to mother earth. Yes. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Let's just step back to downward facing dog and walk it out. Taking your time, pressing your heel closer to the mat. Feel the power in your hands on the mat. Feel the weight evenly distributed between hands and feet. But feeling that power, you own your place on this mat. And continue to walk or just press back and breathe. Maybe taking a couple of Kali breaths. I love these. They're so empowering and they're really stress relieving, releasing. So you inhale and then you open your mouth, stick your tongue out and just <sighs> So <sighs> maybe shake your head, just shake it out one more time. <sighs> I love that. So let's go ahead, bring knees down to the mat for tabletop. Yay. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> you what? I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I said I like tabletop. <laughs> I love tabletop, yes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move our hands around so that we can give our wrists a little, you know, exercise. It's good for carpal tunnel. It just feels good on your hands. Just moving your wrists around. I like to think of a cat meeting. So you're just moving your hands in whichever direction, just trying to make some 360 degrees with the hands. And then maybe turn the hands over on the back of the hands and putting some nice weight on those as you move those around. And then we'll come back into that nice tabletop and start finding some C curves. So find some organic movement Maybe you want to roll your hips around. Just waking up or working through some sticky places with the sacrum, the lower back, or just C curves back and forth. We're eventually going to move into some cats and cows, but it's nice to warm through whatever you need to do before you inhale, lowering the belly, but still keep that core, that navel active. So you inhale and cow and you exhale, pressing through, navel to spine and cat. So work through several of those. Yes. Good breath, Cindy. So the next time you're in cat, I want you to press back into child pose. Open your knees up. And just slide forward and roll your forehead on the mat, relieving stress, just enjoying this nice child pose. You're encouraging your seat to come down on closer to your heels. So butt on the heels is the goal. We'll get there. Just relaxing here. And then come up gently, but sort of just the head up and we're gonna slide forward into Cobra. So just, just sort of sliding through or finding your way on your belly, some belly time here. So legs together, calves up, heels up. Let's inhale, bring the shoulders and the head up and then maybe lift the hands up for a baby Cobra. So we're low, but we are lifted and the hands are above the mat. So get that core in there. Working on some more back bends and some core. Feel the shoulder blades moving down the back. And breathe. Now lowering down on one cheek, bring those hands all the way to the side. We're gonna do a couple of locusts. Continue with some full body activation, but also some more back bends. So the next inhale, we're gonna bring it up. Hands up, feet up, nice gentle locust. Shoulders pressed down for three breaths. And lowering down on the other cheek, just resting for one nice calm 
the deep breath ah, through the nostrils and releasing through the mouth. Next inhale, bring it on up again. Locust. Maybe you come up a little higher here. For five, four, three. Open the chest, bring the shoulder blades down the back, and one. Lowering all the way back down. And let's just bring the hands up for Sphinx. So get the core in this, because it's still it's a little higher back end. So the arm, the elbows are under the shoulders, the hands, I like to spread my fingers apart. And just with that navel pressed in, just let the shoulder blades move down the back, lifting the chest, find a glance, and just breathe here. So let that long calming breath just grow. And you may want to begin engaging the ocean breath, which is called the Ujjayi breath. So maybe you let that breath be the kind of dark, dark Vader sort of in your throat. Just begin exploring with that. And later, if you have any questions, we can hang out and talk a little more. Calm breathing. It's deep, but it's not forced, and it's calm. And then lowering all the way back down. Put your hands by your chest, kind of like the, the way they were in Cobra, but on the mat. And then push the right hand all the way out with your doodle again. This should feel pretty good. So the left hand is by your chest, and you're going to push it and roll over on your side. But the right one's going to be straight out, so it's opening that right shoulder. You're coming up on your side, bring that left hand maybe a little closer to the chest, and then take the left leg and bend it behind you. So you're opening your hips and your shoulder, and we're just going to hang out here and relax. This is yin pose. So in yin poses, you just you don't want to tense up. That that's counterproductive. You want to relax and let the fascia stretch, expand, and that creates room for the muscles to grow and expand. So just breathing here. That's the yin part. Yang is the vigorous with some cardio and moving, just building, you know, the, the active. And the yin is that relax, release, and stretch. And they need each other. So a couple more breaths here. And then roll over onto the belly and bring that right hand in. Sweep the left hand out. This time we're going to do the other side. And then bring that right leg up, left hand is reaching out, and then the right hand is holding yourself, kind of helping balance. Another couple of breaths. And then gently rolling back onto the belly. And let's press back up into tabletop. And from tabletop, if you want to just wiggle out a little bit, work through anything that, like, okay, let's work it out, any stickiness. So we're going to thread the needle this time. So we'll start on the left side, so planting that hand. Well, both hands are planted, but putting the weight on the right so you can lift that left up. Reach up and stretch, nice big breath. Inhaling, exhale, thread that hand through underneath the right arm, right? And then slide that right arm up on the mat so you lower down. All the way to the mat, resting your head on the mat. This should feel really comfy. Nice stretching under the armpit, stretching in the right arm. Working the breast muscles, the lymph nodes, good stuff for detoxing. Couple of breaths here. And then gently coming up, slide that right hand down as the left one slides across the mat, the right one goes down. And then bring that left one back up to kind of do a, a little nice wave again. Reach up and exhale down to close that side. Now we're going to inhale on the right side. So weight on the left hand, bring the right hand up. 
reach into the sky, nice twist. Big inhale, exhale, thread it through under that other arm, sliding the other arm up to the mat. This arm slides through. I'm just breathing here. Couple more breaths. And gently sliding that top hand down the bottom and cross, bringing it back up to reach and stretch. And exhale, lower down. Good. So we're going to throw in a little reflexology. I like to add this in every time I practice. It's super good for your feet, especially for women, because we wear these crazy shoes that we did, and we don't get to do some counter movement on our toes. So you're going to sit on your toes. Make sure the pinky is this. This is part of reflexology. So you know everything's in the hands and feet. So when we're doing this, we're addressing a lot of stuff through reflexology. So we'll be here for a few seconds. You may not go as low as you want to because you're just starting, but you will get lower and we're starting. You just find your journey and then take baby steps. Maybe take the hands behind the head and just clasp and open up your chest and lift it a little back bend here with the core for three, two, one. And gently release the hands, come down to the mat, tap the toes out. And then let's press up. We're going to do one more back bend. This is called camel. So you're going to be standing on your knees. Place your hands back here. Jennifer will call it yoga pockets. <laughs> find, your, find your yoga pockets. Bring your elbows a little closer together. Make sure that core is in because with these back bends, it's really important that you really activate that core so that you're protecting your spine. Your shoulders are rolling forward but your chest then lifts up and then you lower back. And while you're lowering back, your hips are going forward with your thighs, but you're lowering back. Mm -hmm. So you'll naturally kind of find this. That's where your shoulders would go to be able to lower back. Good, nice adjustments, keep the core. Press that navel in and just breathe here. We're gonna do two. So you just gently enjoy your camel here. Three. Two, one with core, press that core in and then come up. And let's lower, nose is itching, lower down into child's pose as a counter pose and then we'll do it one more time. Slide the hands through, ah. Roll the forehead. And then gently coming back up, slide this half step the hands back. Up, knees together, stand up back on your knees. You can always go lower if you want. In a couple of weeks, you may want to touch your heels and go back. You know, so there's variations where you can make it more intense or less. Do the same thing. This time, maybe just stay a little bit longer. Lowering down, don't crunch your neck. Press your hips forward. Make sure your navel is pressing towards spine to protect it. But hips and thighs press forward as you release back for five, four, three, two, one, and gently coming up with core, release down, back in child pose. Yay, we did camel. Come through. And that's a tough one, but it's so good and it's so important that we do back bends. Those are usually pretty tough for me. Yeah, back bends are hard. And, and we're all day long, we're just going forward. We're leaning over the steering wheel, the computer. And so we just need to keep that back flexible. Inhale, come back into tabletop. And let's go ahead and take the right foot back. It should feel pretty good. Straight leg, right foot back, maybe, you know, come back and forth on the foot. And then make sure the hips are square. 
Bring that left hand out. Reach, reach, reach with the left hand and let's lift the right leg up. So we've got an arm leg balance happening here. Reaching up with the hand, reaching back with the leg. And then bend and reach back with the hand and see if you can touch the foot. Maybe grab it and lift it up. The back is warm, so this is an additional little back bend. If your balance is rocking, you can look at your foot. And then release it and stretch forward. And then release that leg back down and just wiggle it out a little in tabletop if you want to roll your hips. Now press your left foot back, your toes, and just rock back and forth a little bit. Feel the calf stretch. Reach out with that right hand, stretch, lift that back leg up, square those hips. Stretch, stretch, stretch. You may want to flex and point your feet. Just have fun. And then reach back and hold the foot. Lift up. And release down when you're ready. Stretch. And come back into tabletop. Walk it out in tabletop. Rock it out, whatever. Now let's take the left from tabletop. We're going to take the left knee and place it behind the right and try to get the feet as open as possible so you can kind of sit in between them. It's a nice hip opener. You're going to feel this on your right side. If you have a block or a pillow or something, you want to sit on it while you work into these. You will, you know, in a couple of weeks after doing this, you will go lower, you will open up, you'll be like a totally new person and it'll ha happen faster than you think, but you just don't want to push it. Be kind. So okay. folding forward a little bit here. And then walk with the fingertips, spider fingers over to the right side. Just breathing into this right side. And then walk over to the left side. Just breathing here and stretching. You're gonna feel this one a lot on the ribs and the right hips, right ribs. And then walk back to the front, back on the mat, and then undo that leg. Come back into tabletop, preparing to do the other side. Again, just any, any natural organic movement that you want to do. Then lifting that right leg, bring it behind the left, open those feet up and sit back. One side's always going to be easier. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And then sweep those hands over to the left and just lean in. Bring in nice, deep, calm breath. And then sweep the hands to the front, moving them over, sweeping to the right side this time, and just lean into the right. Feel the expansion. And stretch. And then walk them to the front and come back onto the mat and tabletop. Squiggle it out. And let's tuck our toes under, press back with the hands, straighten those arms, feel the power of your hands on the mat, maybe wiggle the fingers in. It's so important that we really pay attention to our hands and the power of our hands on the mat and our feet. So a nice inhale, exhale, hips up, downward facing dog, walk that one out, balancing hands and feet, feeling the control of the tree frog feet and the, and the tree frog hands. Just gripping the mat, and let's wave forward into a plank. Just holding plank for just a few seconds. So no sinking down with the belly, no butt up, try to be straight, try to press back with the heels, forward with the hands, a lot of navel here. Nice inhale and then press back into downward facing dog, good job. Let's inhale right leg up and bend it and stack it. So your, your shoulders stay square, but the hips stack up and roll your foot around. Motion is motion. You want those joints getting that movement. Maybe you open up a little more here, lifting that knee up more, opening those hips up more. Square those shoulders though. And then inhale, bring it back up to three-legged dog, lifting that leg up. And then let's bring it all the way forward. Pigeon. So coming forward to the mat with that knee bent and straighten the back leg if you have a prop. 
or a blanket or something, you want to place it under the hip because you want to be square. Yeah, Gail always had to put something under me with pigeon. <laughs> I, I will always put something under myself. I'm just, that's just one of those things. I don't try to be perfect anymore. I tried that a few years ago. Work. <laughs> and I injured myself, and it took me two years to Ooh, hard lesson. So just let's do some cascade waterfalls. So get on your fingertips and just nice big inhale, looking up, chest up, shoulders back, exhale, stay looking up and come all the way down to the mat. And then you can bring your chin in and in and out, coming up. All the way, then bring your head back, exhale, stay looking up, come down to the mat. We're gonna do it one more time. Inhale. And then bring the chest up in the back, then exhale all the way down, melt in the pigeon. We'll take several breaths here, just enjoy it. Couple more breaths here. Next inhale, gently pressing up. So if you did this with Gail, then you know that she gives this option to try to do mermaid. And what I'm going to do is just, we're gonna cue through how you would go there and then you begin your journey or wherever you wanna be with, with that one. But it's nice just to stretch and move through it a little bit. So balancing yourself, spider fingers on the right, reaching out with the left. And it's really good for our brain when we follow our fingers. So following, inhaling up and following the fingers around to the back, maybe tapping the thigh or the calf. Maybe you can reach up and hold the foot. So you will eventually, if you don't already, and then eventually you can slide the foot into the elbow crease. And then you can try to balance, bringing the right hand out. And eventually you'll find your mermaid through touching together and opening up here. So these are all stages and phases of moving and then coming down slowly, gracefully, gently, not ricocheting anything or is that thing pull that slingshot? Yeah, no slingshot. <laughs> Placing the hands down, tuck those back feet. Go ahead and move the top over to the other side. So hands firm on the mat, tuck the back feet and with core lift that that wing, that little pigeon wing up and then bring the leg all the way up. And three-legged dog, stretch it out really well and then bring it down, walk it out. Next, inhale the left leg up. Just really finding your three-legged dog, waking up the back with the right leg, those muscles, bring it up. And then bend your knee and stack your hips and wiggle that foot around. Lift the knee up more, open up, square the shoulders. And then bring that leg all the way up. And bring it forward. For pigeon, landing that foot. For pigeon on the left side, find your problem. Spider fingers, those three nice cascading dots. Inhale, exhale, down. Inhale, exhale, down. Good. And just melt in the pigeon.
Two more nice breaths here. Coming up when you're ready. Reaching out with the right hand this time, following the fingers all around. Touching the back leg, maybe bringing it in. Reaching out with the left hand. Around. Finding your wherever you are with this. It's all goals. And then when you're ready, coming out of this slowly. Moving the prop, or in my case, seat cushion. Tuck those toes in, lift that thing up. Inhale, bring that leg up, 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 up into the head of the dog. Put your feet down, walk it out. Do you have a block or anything, or do you, we're going to go into the last the squat? So then inhale, right leg up, come up on your toes, and then bring your right hand, right foot on the outside of the right hand. And then inhale, bring that left leg up, and then bring it on the outside of the left hand and come down, sitting on a block or a pillow or just wherever you want to be for the last one, squat for a few breaths. This one yeah. seems to really help, this, this, this pose. Wonderful. We'll stay in this for several breaths. You'll see a lot of people doing crow or crane in this. And you know, in the future, we can work on balancing and playing with that. It's really fun. I love teaching people how to do this. So a couple more breaths here. Maybe you bring your chest up more. There's always somewhere we can go in yoga. It's yoga practice, not yoga perfect. <laughs> True. Always going to be a journey. And when you're ready, you stay there as long as you want, but we will... Come down into staff. So we'll have our legs straight in front of us. Maybe spider fingers help remind us to bring balance, shoulders back, shoulder blades down our back, looking forward, looking spine. Inhale, reaching up, pressing shoulders down. Flex the feet and let's hinge forward. So don't fold yet, just hinge. And maybe playfully back and forth just a little bit with core. And then hinging and reaching, holding there. And then release down into a fold wherever you are, just breathing here. This is super healthy for sciatic nerves. They're also called life nerves. Very long nerves, they can make you happy or very sad if they're not happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how that goes. So this makes them happy and stretches them. So a couple more breaths here. And then inhale, gently coming up and bring the feet up as well to Baddha Konasana, cobbler's pose. So feet come together, they can be more diamond out or closer in and just lowering the knees, lift the chest and hinge forward here. And if you want to fold now, go ahead and fold or stay hinging. Whatever your body is meeting, just pay attention to what's screaming at you and tell it, I'll get to you, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> One more breath. And then inhale gently coming up, bringing the knees up. Come back into a hammock. And we're going to do windshield wipers here, also affectionately known as Marilyn Asanas. So lift the chest to pretend that we're 1950s pinup girl. I guess, <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I started calling it hammock. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And then coming back up. With those knees still bent, we're gonna do a little core. So we're gonna work on the tummy, work on a little balance. So let's try right leg up first and reaching up with the arms, holding that right leg, press those shoulders back. 
straighten the arms, lift the core, lift up, and let's just let that leg come down five and lift it up. Four, three, two, one. And then bring that foot down, lift the left, left one up. We get that nice hold and tap it down five. And we'll up two, three, four. That was fine, actually. And then put it down. Now realign, lift the chest up, and let's see if we can bring both feet up. Maybe it's their bent. Maybe they come all the way up. We've done some core. Come into canoe, straighten the legs, come down. Come back up into boat. And then lower all the way down onto our bellies. Oh. Now placing your, bending your knees so your hands are grazing your, your heels. We're gonna move into a bridge. But before we do, let's just lift our hips up. Think Jane Fonda. And then press down. Inhale, peel yourself up though. And then reverse that peel coming down from between your shoulders. Your spine rolls out onto the mat. And then lift the tailbone up and peel up. Let's do that two more times. And then from the up place, you roll back down, reversing the action of the spine melting onto the mat. Two more, inhale. Last one. And now let's try bridge. So still with those fingers, barely grazing the heels, lift the hips up. Now place your hands clasped underneath your tailbone there and wiggle the shoulder blades in. So your chest is really lifting, pressing on the mat with those clasped hands. Lift those hips up. Maybe lift your heels up and go up a little higher and then put the heels down. So let's hold here for five, four, three, two, one. And you can always release the hands and release your back down. You can always do a supported version of that on a block. Blocks are wonderful. And some days you just want to give yourself a break. And if you don't bring that joy in and give yourself a break, then you won't practice as much. So just remember, compassion starts with you. <laughs> Rocking from side to side, hugging your knees. So let's go ahead and try, if you have a block, um, legs up the wall, or you can move into legs up the wall. So we get a little inversion here before Shavasana. And we'll do happy baby before we go into it. But you can just lift your legs up to the sky. You could also move into a shoulder stand, bringing your hips up and hands at your hips. But either way, just get those legs up for a few seconds. If you choose shoulder stand, you can move back into plow. Just holding back up here just for a little while longer. And then just come into happy baby, holding the outside edges of your feet, bringing the knees to the mat, close to the mat, knees close to the mat. They probably won't go all the way down to the mat. <laughs> Jennifer's mic, she's like Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> Just rock back and forth, just finding playfulness in this pose. I love just rocking all the way over the floor. And then release those, but let's open the chest up and just a little spinal twist before Shavasana. Exhale, let those legs go down, maybe to the left side. Those knees, those bent knees for a beautiful spinal twist and the head looks toward the right. And just breathe into this nice spinal twist. If you need a little more, you can take your left hand and gently press on the top of the right thigh just to give a little more twist. Or you can put one leg over or around the other. So just wherever you are that day, honor that. Because if you're feeling it, then you're making progress. You're expanding, so you don't need to do, it shouldn't do too much, that can do damage. Just go, let your body flow and grow and move, expand on your body's terms. Finding peace. Inhale, bring those knees back up. 
Maybe hug them in, little rock back and forth before we release to the other side. Then open up the arms, release the legs down. If you did the left side, then the side will be to the right. Looking to the left or whichever side you didn't do. One more nice long breath. Gently bring those knees back up. Nice little hug again, rocking from side to side. I want to do one more rock before Shavasana. So take your hands behind your thighs and we're going to rock forward and back. So we're giving both a horizontal and, or, and a vertical massage to our spine. So with yoga, you won't lose your height if you're doing yoga. We, Linda, is always telling everybody from the studio that she's never lost her height since she's been doing yoga. So I believe that. It's all mm -hmm. about spine and breath and just bringing your body all the way out to Vasana, stretching out, reach with your hands and feet opposite directions and just stretch. Flex and point the toes, stretch, stretch, stretch. Maybe tense up the whole body. Oh. Making your fist tense, 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 and then ah. Hands to side, relax and just melt. The last thing you do perhaps is let the big toes just kiss each other and then flop the feet out. Finding a smile or just feeling your whole body smile. Lifting your chest, pressing your shoulders back, closing your eyes. Welcome to your Shavasana. Feeling your breath return to your body, taking a nice big inhale as you bring your knees into your chest, hugging yourself, rocking from side to side. Rolling over to your favorite side for today in fetal position. Could be the other side tomorrow. And when you're ready, just pressing up. And easy seated to cross enough. Let's go ahead and spine your fingers all the way out. Flip your hands, scoop up to the sky in gratitude. Pressing shoulders down, reaching up, hands to forehead. As we began, we will close with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Inhaling to begin. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Hands to heart center. May the light in me always honor the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.